everyone, I'm Jody, and welcome to my channel. I am really excited about this video because if you guys had a chance to see that Oprah interview with Adele, she looked stunning. I mean, her whole evening was stunning from her concert to, I mean, even her video a month and a half ago was stunning. So I wanted to recreate the look that she had with her interview with Oprah because I felt like it was a more softer, mature skin, friendly look than perhaps some of the looks that she typically does because her signature look is her eyeliner. I just felt like the interview with Oprah was a nice soft look that would be flattering on more mature skin. So I recreated the entire look. If you like this look and you wanna try it for maybe the holidays or some special night out, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to do it. Now, it's not always easy because of her signature liner, so if you're not comfortable with liquid eyeliner, that's fine. You can absolutely use a pencil liner to sort of trace, outline what you want, or even a shadow, and then go back over it with liquid eyeliner. So don't let that liner look scare you or detour you from giving this look a shot. So this is a look that you wanna do Put me on your phone, on your iPad, wherever you do your makeup. Sit me in the corner and I'll walk you through step by step. So if you're ready, let's get started. I thought let's just go for it and see if we can't sort of recreate that look but with a little bit of a different version, a more um, mature version. And you'll notice in her look, it's very matte uh, with a little bit of sheen. It looked like for me, her lips were matte, her eyes were pretty matte, not a lot of sheen at all. And then her overall, there was a little bit of highlight, I think it looked to be, but not a ton. So we're gonna go with that same look all over, pretty matte. So I'm gonna start with just a Charlotte Tilbury foundation because that is one of my favorite matte foundations and it is very full coverage, which is what I love about it, is you don't need a ton of it, uh, which is nice for more mature skin. And for anybody that doesn't watch my videos, I always, always, always start with sunscreen. So I put that on ahead of time, even though it's pouring down rain and it's very dark today, we can still get rays of light and sun through the dark clouds. So. I'm going to just always, I'm just in the habit of wearing my sunscreen, as you guys probably are too. So we're just gonna put that foundation on everywhere. And this is a little bit of that concert look as well, even though she her hair was up and it was a little bit more dramatic of a look because she was obviously on a huge stage. So we're just gonna blend that in everywhere and give it a nice matte finish all over the whole face, including the eyelids and everything, just so that we have a nice neutral canvas to start with. All right, so once we have our foundation on good and um, full coverage, because her face was absolutely beautiful, her skin was beautiful. And then next we're gonna go in with a little bit of bronzing cream. I'm gonna use the NARS bronzing cream. I don't know if this is still available. They brought this out in the, I think, spring of this year, and it was gorgeous, and it went so fast, and now you can't find it anywhere. So I don't know if it was just a limited time offer or what, but NARS would be, really, we'd love you to bring this back. So she just looks like there's just a little bit of contour around her jawline and, you know, down her neck a little bit, but not a lot it didn't look like. Now, some of her pictures when she first came out with the new song in October, her nose looked pretty contoured, um, it doesn't look, it didn't look as contoured in the Oprah interview as it did before. So we're gonna do a little contouring on the nose, but not a lot. And it looks like there's just a little bit uh, on her forehead that just sort of brings it down a little bit, little bit of shadow shading kind of through there and then all along her hairline. Now I typically don't use a contour to my hairline on my temples just because my temples already go in a little bit more than I'd like them to as I age but she did, so we're gonna just add that a little bit to shape the face and contour just a little bit along that hairline, but I'm not gonna do too much, again, in that temple area. And then it looks like her contour didn't come out very far. It was really just enough to sort of cut that cheek look, uh, and then it just went up a little bit in the back, but a pretty sharp, but short contour, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna take that and blend that in real nicely and natural because you can see it was just a very subtle look. There were no hard streaks, no hard lines. It didn't look like it was just a nice soft contour to the face. So we're just gonna add a little bit of that dimension and add a little bit more of a cheekbone 
than we had. And we'll just go back up to the temple a little bit and the forehead. And the key to that look to me was really blended and very, very subtle. There wasn't, again, really, it just looked very soft, did you guys think? And I just loved what she had to say just about the, the honesty of going through a divorce, if you've ever done that, and how she said learning to parent, you know, on a couple days a week instead of every day. I thought that was just so raw and honest and really, her music is so, I just am excited to hear more of her new album. So it does look like she had her nose contoured just a little bit, so we're just gonna do that as well. And to do that, I like to just take just a little bit of that same contour that I use for the rest of my face and then just go real narrow on each side. Now I already have sort of a narrow, not sort of, I do have a very narrow nose. So this may look really crazy on me because it's already so contoured in real life. It's pretty small, pretty narrow. So we're just gonna hope that that doesn't look like I just completely erased my nose altogether. But she definitely had a, a pretty edgy, I think hard lined nose. So in order to do that, you have to definitely contour with some pretty, very straight lines. Then we're gonna add some concealer. It didn't look like she had a lot of concealer on, but definitely there was some lightness under her eyes, just a little bit around her cheeks, but very natural looking, I thought. Her face looked flawless, so we're gonna spend a little bit more time on the face than I normally would. But, you know, if I was on an interview with Oprah, of course I would spend more time on my face. <laughs> just a little bit of a nice contour there. Just a little bit of a concealer underneath the eyes and down the nose to sort of sharpen that and have that contrast between your contour and your concealer or your highlighter, if you will, down your nose, just to give a little bit of brightness and help that drawing dimension, if you will, to contour more of a, a thin nose, which it looked like she had in that interview. We're gonna just blend all of that in nicely and then, you know, the most dramatic thing with Adele has always been her eyes. Now, it looks to me like the biggest difference between some of her older, and by older, I mean previous pictures, was she was very much an eyeliner, very thick eyeliner on top, and some pretty thick lashes. And it did appear as though her lashes weren't nearly as thick as she has done in the past, which helps lend itself, I think, to that sort of softer look that she had in that interview. And then some of her, you know, her makeup for the night of the concert was stunning. And obviously when you do your makeup for an event like that, it's much darker so that it shows up on camera. But we're very much a look that you can wear out in everyday world. The next thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of blush because she had a very muted, I think, look to her blush. I'm just gonna go in with a cream blush. This is the um, Clay de Peau. And just, she, it looked like it started pretty far back and went up just a little bit, just to give a little bit of color, but there wasn't a ton of rosiness or peachiness to her cheeks at all. And it definitely didn't come very for, far forward. It was much more on the outside of her face, just to give it a little bit of color it appeared. But it was blended very well with that bronzer that was underneath. So the two, when you layer a bronzer underneath a blush, they just really look beautiful and pretty well blended. And there was definitely a little bit of a line going between her bronzer or contour and her foundation down below, which we've done there with just a very soft look. Now again, the key here is that it wasn't pulled very far forward. I usually have my blush stop right here in the kind of the pupils of my eyes, but her blush was definitely pulled back. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of powder underneath my eyes since we've added that concealer already. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a little bit of the Laura Mercier on the back of my hand with the sponge and just press it in really softly just to give it that setting that we want as we start to work on our eyes. And then that way, if there's any color fallout from the shadows, then we'll be able to wipe it off with this loose powder. Next, we're gonna go to the eyes. And as you guys know, I always curl my lashes because we are gonna put on some lashes today. But again, I don't think she wore as thick of lashes as she typically does. And then we'll go right to brows. Now you'll notice her brows are darker than her root color and that her hair color. And it's a very soft brown. Now they're not a stark, the lines and the edges are not harsh at all and they're not really harshly shaped, if that makes sense. She's got a nice soft shape to them and they're almost all colored in, 
not little fine hairs. So that's a little bit of a different look for me. I'm usually more of a, of a sparse eyebrow person so that it looks more like there's hairs there. Hers were definitely more filled in. So we're gonna do that and it might look a little crazy until we get the whole look pulled together. And you can tell there's not a, a lot of arch with her brows on, either, on the top or the bottom. They're much more straight and then kind of fades out a little bit of that fox eye that we've been seeing. So we'll do that on both sides. Okay, so you can see there's not a ton of shape to the brows. They go pretty straight across the bottom of the brow and pretty straight across the top of the brow. And then just a little bit of that fox eye. So that's what we've done there. And again, a little bit darker, heavier handed. There's not a lot of fibers in the brows. They're definitely a thicker, heavier brow. I like to use a nice concealer on my eyelids and just cover up any of that purpley color, especially paying special attention to the inside corner of your eyes. And then making sure that you don't mess up any of those lines. And then you can always go back in, which I typically do, with a concealer right after I'm done with all my shadows so that I still have kept that nice crisp line, crisp but soft, if that makes sense, on your eye brows. All right, so from there, we're going to go into the eye shadow look. Now, this is where it gets really fun, and you can see um, where she's got some nice soft browns. I'm going to start with this CoverGirl True Naked Nudes. Really pretty browns in there, and it looks like there's just sort of a straightness to the browns, if you will. So I'm just going to go with this darker brown color right here, and just start to sort of the corner of your eye, but you can see across the top, it's more straight almost the same shape as the eyebrow on the top of the shadow coming into the corner of the nose. So I'm just gonna draw those lines on both sides to give you sort of that outline to work with. So it's sort of straight across the top, kind of following the same line as the eyebrow, and then we're gonna curve it just a little bit so that we have that same curve to the eye that gives you that crease cut that you look for. So then we'll just crease cut it a little bit with this same color. So you can kind of see how you're starting to outline the bottom part of the shadow is giving you that curve and the top part of the shadow is giving you that straight line. That's a really important piece to this overall look. And then it just kicks out a little bit on both sides. So coming down a course with the corner of the nose, mirroring the eyebrow and then your crease cut. And then from there, we're just gonna go a little bit darker right now and take a smaller pencil brush because this is a little bit more precise work. Is go right in the corner of the eye and this is where you're gonna crease cut right above your eye socket. And if you don't have an eye socket or you have more hooded eyes, you can still create this look just having more of an open eye as you're doing this versus a closed eye. So once your eye is open, then you'll really look for that crease cut of where you wanna put your marker. From the corner to that crease cut, so you can kinda of get a good look of how those two have connected. We're really just drawing right now, you guys, and just adding some dimension to that color. And then once we've got our color placed, we're now going to start to blend because we want to blend the light and the dark colors together before we go any further. And when I say blend, we really just want to sort of blow those colors out. So I'm just going to use a MAC 217 brush. This is one of my favorite blending brushes and just start to blend those two. I don't want to move the color around. You really just want to blend it as nicely as you can so that the edges between the two colors are not obvious. And you don't want to move that line that you just added. You want to blend it a little bit, but you're really just trying to blow out or soften the edges, if you will, of the two colors that you just put on there. And then you can bring that in a little bit to about this much of your eye from the center out, but don't bring that dark from the center in underneath where you've just added that darkness because that needs to stay light because you'll notice that this color above her eyebrow is pretty similar to the color that's in this section, this this half of the eyelid. So we'll get to that color in a second once we blend out these darker colors. The hardest part I think to this whole look is really the eyeliner because she definitely uses and favors liquid eyeliner. Now liquid eyeliner can be really fun to work with, but if you're not comfortable with it, it can be intimidating. 
I usually start, when I started to learn how to use a liquid eyeliner, I just started really small and just did little tiny lines and did that for a couple weeks so I was comfortable with it. And then I would start to go a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, and then I got more comfortable with it. And again, I really only use the liquid eyeliner if and when it's gonna be an event out it's gonna be you know, lower lighting where I want a really stark eye, but I'm not a big fan of liquid eyeliner a lot just because I think it's pretty harsh. And the lighter complexion you are and the lighter hair that you have, that darker eyeliner, that liquid eyeliner just feels harsh. But when you want a glam look, that is definitely the way to go. So you can see that just sort of blends out nicely, but you still have that straight line, if you will, across the top where that brown is on both sides, and then just a nice blending down to blend into that contour that goes on the side of the nose so that there's a nice, even, consistent browning, if you will, or shading to the side of the nose. So then from there, we're just gonna go with the next color, which is a little bit lighter color. And for that, I'll just go with a very simple brush that gives me some space. Probably that 217 from MAC is another good one just because of the size of it. But I'm gonna use, this is a Sigma E70, just a little bit of a tapered brush. Any brush that you have that has the space on it that's not too big will be fine. For this, I'm gonna go in with the second color, which is a, just a muted light cream color. Again, not a lot of shimmer. Her whole look was pretty matte. And I'm just gonna go onto the inside of the corner of my eyelid to about halfway out and then up to the crease. And just kind of press that in, not really blending because we don't wanna blend the other colors into it. We definitely want that color to stand alone on um, both eyes. And then we're gonna take that a little bit above between that top shadow here and the brow. So I'll just finish this side with that lighter color. And it's not a real obvious lighter color either. And then from that, we'll use that same color and just go right above, again, almost a straight line you can see that mirrors her eyebrow. So all really nice, softly muted colors, all blended really nicely together. And you can do this with any type of color that you want. Um, hers be were because they were creams and I think it went to go match nicely with her cream earrings and her cream blazer that she had on it just was a nice look all together. Now you can also see that if you look at the very corner of her eyes, there's definitely some lightness or some sparkle, a little bit of gleam or shimmer there. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this Revolution highlight and just go right into the corner of my eyes. Now this is a step that you usually will do last I like to do it now because I just like to see where that light is gonna go before I put on my eyeliner when I'm using a liquid liner because I don't wanna go too far in with that liquid liner and this just helps me sort of know where I wanna stop with that liner. So we're just gonna put a little bit there because if you'll notice her liquid liner does go all the way to the corner of her eye and rounds all the way back out. So it is a complete outline of the eye. So from there, we're just gonna go a little bit darker with the shadow in the corners just because you can see there's a little bit more darkness there. So we'll go back and just add a little bit of that dark where that crease cut is. And you can see when you do that from both sides, you really get a chance to say how even is it so that you know if you wanna, does one side need to go up a little bit more or come down a little bit more. And then it's just smoked out real simple. And once you get the color where you want it, a nice tapered brush like this can also help do some blending and keeping it, keeping the color of the shadow right where you want it. And the more you add layers of color, the more dimension that you will get out of the color. So if you don't really think that you've got enough dimension, then just go in and put a little bit more darker color on top of it. And then as you blend those together, you'll start to see that dimension that you're looking for. And we'll just do that on both sides and blend that out. Again, just sort of blurring the lines. All right, so now comes the eyeliner and this is where it gets a little bit fun and tricky. And so if you're not comfortable with, with liquid liner, then I always suggest just using a regular eyeliner. And then once you have your regular eyeliner on, then you can retrace it with a, as I'm, as I'm sharing this with a lip liner, that won't do you any good. Well, it could, but it would look a little crazy. So any of your eyeliners, whether they're a brown or a black, I would probably do a brown if you're not sure you're really comfortable with it and then just retrace it with your liquid liner. In fact, let's do that just so you can kind of get a sense of what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna grab this Smashbox. This is a brown eyeliner. And I'm just going to real carefully look at the 
the way her eyeliner is shaped. And you can see it just goes from the corner out pretty much at a wing. And then once you take that corner out and wing it, then you take the top where you stopped from here out and then pick it up at the top and just bring it in. And then from there, it goes all the way across the lid and down into the corner. Okay, now I like the way that looks, so I'm gonna leave it and then I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll go over it with the liquid liner. Now, when you do the wing, it does get a little tricky just to make sure that the angles are exactly the same because it's pretty easy to get one up and one down. I've done that plenty of times. So I'm just gonna really carefully look at where I've got the point and then go from there so that it matches the same on the other side. And then you just connect it down I know I make it sound so easy and it really is once you start practicing. Don't feel like you have to do this with a liquid liner. If you're more comfortable with a pencil liner, then just absolutely use the pencil liner. The key is though, when you're gonna do the corner of your eye, to me, a pencil liner is absolutely easier because I just think a liquid liner is far less forgiving as you get to those smaller areas that have such detail. It's easier to hide some of your mistakes as you get out here when you add mascara and lashes, but it's much far less easy to hide those errors and the little wiggles in the line as you get to the inner corner of your eyes because there's not a bunch of lashes that you can hide it with. You know, it also looks like she's got a lighter color on the bottom lashes than it does on the top. So I'm gonna stay with the brown and just slightly go along the lash line across the bottom. Now, now you'll notice her eyeliner goes all the way, rims her eye and then goes all the way to the corner of the inner eye. I don't normally wear my makeup like this, but for the sake of dueling the same look, we're gonna do it. And I just don't, because I just don't like that look on me, on the way my shape of my eyes are. And so think about how you want, if you wanna duplicate this look, do you like your eyes being rimmed? If not, you could stop wherever you typically stop. The whole key to this look is not dependent on your eyeliner going all the way across the bottom to the corner. The look will not be ruined. You'll still achieve a very beautiful glam look if you don't use the eyeliner all the way around the bottom. So from there, then we're just gonna take a soft brush because you can see that's a little bit blown out and it looks like she's got a little bit of a pink maybe underneath to soften that look. So once you get rid of all those edges with a more stiff brush, I usually use an eyebrow pencil to do that. Then I will take a smaller, softer bristled brush and add some sort of a color to it. Uh, in this case, it looks like she's got a little bit of a pinky. So I think I'm just gonna go in with this lighter brown in the same CoverGirl palette and just kind of soften that up a little bit so that it looks like you have an eyeliner there but that the focus is really on the top liner. So we'll just soften that up a little bit. Now comes the fun part. Since we traced it already with our pencil eyeliner, we're just gonna go in with a liquid liner. liner. I'm gonna use the Tattoo Liner by Kat Von D or KVD and just retrace exactly what I just did with the pencil. So once you get that eyeliner really where you want it, and you'll notice that they're still not exactly even, and the edges and the straight lines aren't there yet, but we're gonna fix that, so don't worry. And if you have to go back in with some darker liner, or if you've gotta fix it with an eyeshadow, that's totally fine too, so don't, don't worry about that too much. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and put a little bit more light shadow just above that darker brown line um, and just below your brow. And to do that, I'm gonna spray my brush with a little bit of setting spray. I love e.l.f. setting spray. One, because it smells like coconuts and it just, it's a nice refreshing coconut smell, but not overbearing coconut smell. So that is definitely my favorite setting spray that you might've saw. I just completed the, my top five favorite beauty products in a series of four different videos and the setting spray one was included in the face one and I'll link that series right up here if you wanted to see the whole complete series, there's four of them. So anyway, now we're gonna go in with that lighter color and we're just gonna go right above and sort of create sort of a straight line, if you will. So imagine if your brush was straight, you're just gonna go straight really so that this line above that brown shadow is straight. So I'm gonna over exaggerate it a little just so you can get the sort of the look of it that I'm going for. And then we're just gonna fill that in a little bit so that it looks less 
obvious and more of a blend. So just a straight look. And then from there, I'm just gonna bring that in a little bit to the eyelid, just to lighten that up a little bit more and show the definition and the contrast between the eyeliner that's in the corner of your eye and that cut crease area that you're trying to achieve. So right above the lid, below the crease, and all the way into the corner to about a halfway out of your eye. And we'll do that on both sides, and that just sort of helps accentuate that cut crease without having a harsh cut crease there. Now, if you find that you didn't really get the liner where you wanted, then don't be afraid to go back in with your concealer, and I do this a lot, and if I'm in a hurry, I'll just sort of do it with the brush, but more times than not, I'll do it with a silicone type brush, and just because it's thinner on the edge, and then you can just go in and have a nice sharp line. And you'd be, most likely they do this in her look, just to give it that nice crisp cut line all the way up where the shadow stops and everything then blends in really nicely to the rest of the makeup. I'm gonna leave that like that just for a second so you can get a sense for really what that looks like. And you're just, you're just outlining or sort of cleaning up any messes or, you know, if you've baked a cake and then you've frosted it and you've made a couple little mess ups, you just go back and the detail and the precision work is really what makes the biggest difference. That's the same can be said here. So we're just gonna blend that in so that it's not so obvious, but it's okay if there's a little bit of a line there, not where you can see the difference in product, but that you can see that where the product ends and then softly blends into the rest of your face. And if it's a little bit of a line still there, then it just gives a nice um, crispness, if you will, crispness uh, to your overall look. So we're just gonna do that on both sides. Now without lashes, this can absolutely look a little crazy, so we're gonna add some lashes here in a second as well as some lipstick. From there, now, you know, Adele is famous, I think, for her lash look, and she does a great job with lashes. I'm gonna start with mascara, and we're gonna build it up from there. So I'm gonna use the CoverGirl Exhibitionist. These are waterproof lashes, which is perfect, because it's raining here in Seattle today. I know, surprise, surprise, raining in Seattle. Like, that's a shock. Uh, but it is, in fairness, it is November, so, it's supposed to rain in November, right? Is it raining where you guys are? I've got people from Bangladesh, from the Philippines, from Australia, so I'd love to, obviously it's different seasons in different parts of the world right now, so I'd love to know where you are in the world and what season it is where you are. So we're just gonna add some mascara to these lashes and then we will add lashes, lashes. Now, Adele, like I said, she used to, and by used to, I mean in you know, 2015, 2016, when her albums were first coming out, she's becoming really popular. She was just known for that lash look with her liner, her liquid liner. It looked as though, to me, she had less of a lash look in the interview and in the concert that she put on than she has in the past, but she still has that very Adele signature liquid liner look, which I think just looks so good on her. So we'll let that dry for just a second, and then what I'm gonna do is just go in with some lashes. All right, so the lashes are on, and once you get the lashes on, you're really gonna start to see that look coming together, and then you can sort of step back and go, okay, where else do I need to add? Now, when you, when you take a look at the tail end of that eyelash into the skin, if you will, on Adele, it's a little bit thinner than I have it, but she also has just a little bit of sort of pink up there. So I am gonna go in with my Vizzy Art eyeshadow palette, just cause I want a little bit of a warm color to add to the outside of this darker corner. So we're just gonna add like this peachy sort of skin color, but a little bit warmer if you will, and just kind of touch it at the end. Now it's not gonna help with the sharpness of that liner, but it's definitely going to give it sort of that soft smoothness to the end of that look. And then we'll go in with this really light color and just go right onto the center of the eye. Again, that just sort of helps define that cut crease a little bit and add some dimension to where you added those lashes. And then just blend all that out real smoothly on both sides of that darker brown that you had and then we are almost done with the eyes. From there, you can see that her lips are overlined a little bit. Now, I have been prepping my lips, if you will, with my Aquaphor, which I use every day, and I just put this on before I do any of my makeup so that it's 
moisturizing my lips while I'm painting my face. There you go, that's, that's its job while I do mine. So I am going to outline my lips and I just thought because, you know, Adele is from the UK and Charlotte Tilbury is from the UK, let's use Charlotte Tilbury UK. Um, pay homage to the UK with this iconic nude lip liner. Adele's makeup artist did a fantastic job of outlining her lips and sort of overlined her lip line to give her more of a plump fullness and you can tell that when you look at pictures compared to you know just a year ago. Just It's just a nice simple line outside of the lip line to give them a more larger appearance. So we'll do that today and just sort of overline our lips. Again, I'm just gonna use the Iconic Nude by Charlotte Tilbury and just go outside. And I like to start with the outer edges of that lip line and then I'll go in and do the V because for me it's just easier to see where that V should go. What is your guys' favorite Adele song? I'm curious. I love her 20 album and the fact that this new album is 30 is just perfect. So, um, but on her 20 album the whole thing was so good. Water Under the Bridge I love because it's just got that nice cool beat to it. But so many of her songs are good that um, I just love her. I don't say that very often about a lot of artists, but I think her look is iconic. I love her um, her style, her personality. I think it's super funny and down to earth. So I hope I can do justice to this look today. Her lip look is very beautiful. It's a darker, perfect for fall color. It looks very matte, but not in an over drying sort of way, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go with Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk. It's a nice matte, dark berry type fall color that it looks like she has on. Now, if you find that you get a little bit carried away with the overlining of the lips, and it happens, then just you take that same concealer brush that you use to sharpen that edge on your eyeliner and do the same thing with a little bit of concealer and just outline the edge of your lips. Now I can, you can use a brush like this or you can use a pencil. Sometimes I'll use a pencil just for ease. This is just a Smashbox, really, I think it's a vanilla color. And it's just a nice sharp line so that you could really get a sharper look if you needed to. See that just gives a nice sharp crisp look and then you can take your concealer and blend that out a little bit. It's really those details that make the difference in a professional makeup look. It's just cleaning up those edges to give everything a nice clean look. So we're getting closer. Now let's see how the hair, we can maybe do something with that that looks a little bit more closely related to the hairstyle that she has. Gosh, I'm just so not used to wearing my makeup this dark. Her hair is obviously all to one side, a couple curls on one side, really high. I don't think mine could go that high on my best day. So we're not gonna try to do that, but we will just try to get this little look off to one side that she's got. So I think we're pretty close, you guys. I think this pretty much finishes the look that she had. I mean, obviously she had a makeup artist. It looks stunning, but you can see it's not that difficult of a look. It's just a few different layers of the blush and then the bronzer. And then again, that's just really far back with some pretty harsh lines. And then it's just that really nice layered eyeshadow. Now, again, you don't need to have that liner out quite as far as she did, but I think that's, that's Adele's iconic look. So I hope you enjoy this look. It's a great look for the holidays that are coming up. So however you choose to celebrate with your family, this might be a nice, easy look. I think it was very glamorous and soft with the lighter colors, the more the cream colors, her nice earrings, it all went together. So I think it was just overall, it was a totally pulled together look. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hats off to the makeup artist that did Adele's look for that interview with Oprah. I think she looked stunning as she always does. And um, Adele, good job to you. It was a fantastic concert. Thanks everyone for watching. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and leave me any comments that you have. And most importantly, I'd love to hear what your guys' favorite Adele song is. So if you could leave me that, that would be great. and Really super fun for me to read. Thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy this look, doing it yourself. Talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.